Hey everybody, so two for one deal today. So we got Alloy and then we got Kujo Serra. Both are collected miscellaneous dropped last night. So I'm just gonna put them in here in the same video and I will timestamp it. And oh man, Raiden Shogun, absolutely loving her as a character so far. And I spent the good part of the morning just collecting artifacts for her for a couple hours. And as soon as I'm done that, or sorry, as soon as I'm done this, I'm gonna hop back right into it and do some exploring i did get the story quest and the character quest done and i'll be posting that over the next few days for you so anyway let's see what's going on with alloy and i'm very curious to see what dangsleaf has to say if anything if memory serves me right the last time an outlander visited Tivat was centuries ago is that alice Imagine my surprise when I discovered yet another guest during my most recent travels. A machine hunter, an outcast of the Nora tribe. Oh my, I cannot wait to learn more about her and her abilities. Let's not dilly-dally and begin our research. Aloy here. I don't know this world, but my arrows are sharp and my bow's ready. If that is her, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, this is going to be my last time pausing it. So yeah, we're going to get crossover characters since they're coming from other worlds and she's a world hopper. She'll obviously be talking about them. I think that's pretty cool. Based on my observations, Aloy is highly proficient with a bow and arrow. She can limit her prey's mobility with the power of cryo, aiding companions in setting up ambushes. Rejected by her tribe since birth, Aloy gained her hunting prowess under the watchful eye of an experienced hunter. Like any successful adventurer, hunters never rush into danger. One must tactfully hide and wait to strike. When Aloy is in the party, animals that produce foul, raw meat, or chilled meat will not be startled when approached. Oh, damn! Aloy's normal That's good for cooking, for sure. And can combo up to four consecutive shots. For a more precise aimed shot with increased damage, Hold the attack button. Mm -hmm. Played with her a little bit yesterday, but not too much. Frost on the arrowhead, which will deal cryo damage once fully charged. Tap Aloy's elemental skill to throw a freeze bomb in the targeted direction that explodes on impact, dealing cryo damage. I do like the th the throw animation. The She's really given it. Water bomblets that explode on contact with opponents or after a short delay, dealing cryo damage. Such an ingenious blasting design. Oh, that was cool. When a freeze bomb or chill water bomblet hits an opponent, the opponent's attack is reduced, and Eli receives a coil stack, which increases her normal attack damage. I actually think that's a pretty cool looking skill. The coil effect is removed. And Aloy gains rushing ice for a set time period, which additionally increases her normal attack damage and converts her normal attack damage into cryo damage. Mm. While under the effect of rushing ice, Aloy cannot receive new coil stacks. Coil effects will be cleared once Aloy leaves the field for a set time. After unlocking the talent Combat Override, for a certain duration after gaining the coil effect, Aloy increases the attack of all party members. Not bad. Cannot stack. A little bit of party support. The hunt is on. Aloy throws a power cell filled with cryo in the targeted direction, then detonates it with an arrow, dealing AoE cryo damage. An explosive infused with elemental energy. Remarkable. If utilized in the right time and place, its effectiveness will be indisputable. That's pretty badass. A good hunter can deliver a decisive blow or hold their own during a long Yeah, battle. she's not looking too bad After at all. After unlocking the talent Strong Strike, when Aloy is in the rushing ice state conferred by Frozen Wilds, her cryo damage bonus gradually increases. Aloy is a skilled hunter who moves with great precision like a cat in pursuit of its prey. It'll be difficult to escape her attacks once she locks onto her target. Any foe can be conquered with the joint forces of her and her companions. In combat, Aloy often opens up with her freeze bomb and accumulates coil stacks while her teammates launch their attacks. Mm -hmm. Once an opponent is hit by a freeze bomb or chill water bomblet, the party's attack will be increased thanks to the combat override talent. When Aloy reaches four coil stacks, she enters the rushing ice state, 
This makes her arrows even more lethal as they'll pierce enemies with biting frost. Combine this with the talent Strong Strike to constantly increase Aloy's cryo damage during rushing ice. When her energy is full, Aloy unleashes her elemental burst that wipes out opponents in the target area. Yeah, she seems very straightforward and easy to use as well. I hope you found my research as informative as I did. Mm. As a sorceress, I love making new discoveries, examining all kinds of otherworldly things, and using that knowledge to create something new. Maybe Aloy and I are more alike than it may seem. Though she plays so many roles in her homeworld, Aloy begins her journey into Vat with a clean slate. She'll get to know new places, meet new companions, and reconsider what her homeland means to her. With her survival skills, adventuring into Vat should be a breeze. <laughs> Watching Klee. If only she'd let me tinker with her bombs a little. <laughs> no, God, please. Blow up to Vat. See if there's anything I missed. But no, she seemed, because I didn't even try her elemental skill last night when I was playing around with her. But uh, no, she looks pretty straightforward to use. And I do like the whole bomb thing. I am a fan of that. Sheen Hunter. That's such a beautiful part of Mondstadt, too. That's a good pan oh shot. I get a direction that explodes on impact. Damn, she throws better than I do. Get her, Klee, and you and me in the same party, and they'll just blow everything to smithereens. It's a nice little bonus with attack reduction. So attack reduction and attack buffing all at once. Pretty good. So that was Aloy. She does look decently fun. I don't think I'm going to be using her particularly much. Uh, but what about some of you? Definitely let me know if you are going to uh, give her a bit of an investment and get a bit of a tryout. So now it's time for Kujo Sarah. I get to know Kujo Sarah quite a bit better during the main quest. And I got her... At the exact same time as I got the Raiden Shogun. Played her for a little bit. I just haven't played her a super ton yet. I'm pretty happy with the Raiden Shogun at the moment. She's got my full attention. But we'll see down the road what happens. Uh, let's see what they have to say about her. Uh, that was so weird hearing hearing Alice for that last trailer. And uh, now it's back to Dane's sleep, I'm sure. The Tengu of Inazuma dwell in the mountain forests, rarely appearing in human society. Yeah, Inazuma's got quite a few races within its borders. Kujosara does not to mention serve as their army general, is almost unheard of. One wonders if, in her eyes, the profound seclusion of the densely wooded mountains and the eternity pined for by the Raiden Shogun bear any similarity to each other. I will lead us to victory. As general of the Tenryo Commission, Kujo Sara is a fearless warrior and a formidable leader. As one of Tengu blood, she can summon the mighty power of Tengu Jurai to rouse her troops mm. as she leads them into the heat of battle. God, I do Tengu love her look. Known for their agility, and Kujo Sara knows Inazuma exceptionally well, as her role requires her to move around frequently and rapidly. When Kujo Sara is dispatched on an expedition in Inazuma, she completes the task in a reduced time. Oh, damn. Well, I'll be using her a lot for that. Normal attack can combo up to five consecutive shots, dealing physical damage. Holding the attack button executes a more precise shot that deals increased damage. Mm -hmm. While aiming, crackling lightning accumulates on the arrowhead. An arrow fully charged with the storm's might will deal electro damage to enemies on impact. When Kujo Sara casts her elemental skill, she retreats rapidly with the speed of a Tengu. Yeah, it did, did play with that a bit. protection of the crow feather in the form of crow feather cover. When Kujo Sara fires a fully charged aimed shot, crow feather cover is consumed, and a crow feather is left where the arrow strikes. Oh, After didn't know that. The crow feather triggers Tengu Jurai ambush. Which deals electro damage to enemies in its AoE. Mm. Yeah, because I knew I could get the AoE after the late time, but I didn't know I had to fire a charge shot or could fire a charge shot. Skilled use of this technique allows Kujo Sara to rapidly evade enemy attacks. Yeah. And also set the stage for a robust counterattack from an advantageous position. After unlocking the tower, you go away, Yaka. Will, after gaining Crow Feather cover by casting her elemental skill. Kujo Sara's aimed shots reach full charge more quickly. 
Kujo Sara is an intelligent and capable general. Troop morale is all the stronger just for knowing she is in command. After unlocking the talent Decorum, when Tengu Jurai ambush hits an enemy, all party members restore some energy, the amount of which is based on Kujo Sara's energy recharge. This effect can be triggered once per set time period. Oh, Rosaria, nice. Glory to the Shogun! Kujo Sara casts down Tengu Jurai Titanbreaker, dealing AoE. I do like that elemental burst. Afterwards, Tengu Jurai Titanbreaker spreads out into four consecutive bouts of Tengu Jurai Storm Cluster, dealing AoE electro damage. Mm -hmm. Both Titanbreaker and Storm Cluster can provide the active character. Yeah, that's wicked AOE just with her with the, the fan in the sky and the wings popping Tengu out while she does damage. that. It's badass. The attack bonus provided by various kinds of Tengu Jurai cannot be stacked. The effect and duration is determined by the last Tengu Jurai to take effect. Mm -hmm. Kujo Sara is a seasoned war veteran and a leader. Errol looked like he was heading right for that dude's crotch for a second. She uses the secret techniques of the Tengu to bolster her forces and empower them to win victory after victory. Mm. In battle, Kujo Sara must make deft use of her elemental skill to adjust her strategic position. Good dodge. And use charged shots to trigger Tengu Jurai ambush, dealing damage to the enemy while providing attack bonuses to teammates and restoring energy for the whole party. When energy is full, Kujo Sara unleashes her elemental burst to assault the enemy and once again provide a Tengu Jurai attack bonus. My girl! Paving the way for her forces to swoop in and crush the enemy's defenses. As a Tengu raised by humans, Kujo Sara heeds the call of humanity, forsaking her own kind, to fight for the mortal world in battle. Perhaps those who achieve such outstanding feats are too satisfied with their own brilliance to realize that their god has raised them in a prison. Sometimes I cannot decide whether the greater tragedy is to have lost all one's own ambition or to have adopted the wishes of a god as one's own. Oh, some strong words from Dainsleaf there. I think I pretty picked up most of what they had to say about her, but let's go through it again just in case, because I always seem to learn something new the second time around. Society. I can't wait to see what our uh, our Oni character that's coming in the future, the, the Oni Sumo King, looks like. And I so wish there was an option for like Xiao and her for an option to put their mask on. I think that'd be pretty cool. Oh, anyone in there gets an attack bonus too. Okay. Yeah, so with her energy recharge and her attack boosting ability, the Sun is going to be a decently good support character. And a leader greatly admired by her subordinates. Yeah, the fact that she's a leader ties into her abilities because she's very much supporting everybody. Sometimes I cannot decide whether the greater tragedy is to have lost all one's own ambition or to have adopted the wishes of a god as one's own. Yeah, Dainsleaf has no time for gods or, or those who follow them like Kujo Sarah does. That's for damn sure. Oh, and the more we learn about Conria, the more I'm just... Oh, I think we all know that some pretty messed up stuff went down there. We know gods died there. We know their got their friends died there. Not to mention Conria itself. We know a lot of stuff went down and we, we don't really know why. I think we have suspicions why. I have my suspicions why, but... And time will tell and we'll see. But as always, thank you for joining me for this uh, reaction. And I will be posting my story playthrough tomorrow, hopefully, if I can get the video done and processed in time. And then the day after that, I'll be doing the, the oh my gosh, the Raiden Shogun character quest. So as always, thanks again. I'll see you later.